we are back with another build your wardrobe tutorial and this is week two of the build your wardrobe series so this week what we're doing is the white blouse and this is my week guys and I'm super excited just to show you the different ways that you can use or pair your white blouse once you make it already if you have made it with a pair of jeans to make a casual look or with a pair of slacks for a more dressed up look or with a pe uh, pencil skirt or print skirt and as we create more videos like I said or as we create more pieces um, then we'll just really get to see how we can mix and match all those things so today we will be doing the white blouse alright guys let's get started alright guys so let's get started with the supplies that you're gonna need for this video alright of course the first thing that you're gonna need is your pattern and the pattern that we're gonna be using for this one is M6436 now this is a new pattern for me but um, I kinda read some reviews online just to kinda see how people had um, with doing this pattern and a lot of people said you know that um, they, they really like the pattern but the darts on the bus were causing it to be a little more nipply at the top so what I did was um, I adjusted my bust. I moved it back two inches and I'll show you that in a little bit just so you can see how I did it um, just to take some of the pointiness out of the bust. You can do this or not. Now if you've made this pattern before then you know how it turns out turned out for you. Alright so by this being my first time I'm gonna go with what people have said online and I'm gonna go ahead and, and adjust that, that uh, dart for the bust. Alright but we will be using M6436. Alright you will also need some buttons, you'll need 12 one inch buttons, all right? And of course, I did white buttons. I'll just kind of blend in and, and be nice and sleek with my, my white blouse. All right, you'll also need some light waist interfacing. And make sure you check all of, you know, the amounts and the yardage that you'll need for everything because it does vary based off of your size, of course. All right, so you will need some light face interfacing. Now, they tell you to use sew-in interfacing, but I'm actually going to use my iron-on interfacing because I have plenty and I don't believe in going buying stuff if I have a whole lot alright so interfacing is what you need alright so let's get to the pattern numbers that you're gonna need the pattern pieces that you're gonna need are gonna be piece three alright you're also gonna need piece seven you are also going to need piece eight piece nine Piece 11, that's your pocket. Piece 12. And your arm pieces you will need are going to be piece 13. The second part of the arm piece is piece 14. And piece 15. Now, out of all these pieces, you will have to interface piece 15. You'll have to interface piece 9. You'll need to cut interfacing for piece eight. All right, and that's all the pieces that you'll need. It is a lot of pieces, but make sure that you go ahead and cut all of your pieces out. All right, and follow and transfer all of your markings onto your um, fabric. It's very important, of course, to transfer all your markings, all your notches to your pattern pieces, so that you don't have to worry about that once you get started. Let's go ahead and cut out all your pattern pieces. I'm a little bit ahead of you guys, all right, but I want you to go ahead and cut out all your pattern pieces. Transfer all your markings. Make sure that you cut out all of your interface pieces too, just to get all that out of the way. All right, and then let's get started. See you right, guys. So the first piece that we're going to work on is your front piece and this is piece three. I hope that you made all of your markings like I have as you can see my piece here. Alright and so what we're going to do is look at this body so you can see exactly how I altered my darts. Alright? Alright so according to um, what the pattern says this is actually the apex of the, bo uh, the bust and I actually did it with mine um, or laid the pattern piece up against me so that I can see uh, and make sure that that was my apex what I w did was based off of my size um, which is a 12 my dart was supposed to start here but that was way too close to the apex alright and so usually what happens is if your dart or the end of your dart is too close to your apex um, then it will cause more of a pointy nipply look. So um, what I went ahead and did was move mine back and um, first I measure where it actually fell at before I moved it back and it fell at, fell at about the one and a half inch mark for my um, 12. So what I did was move it all the way back to two inches. Alright and I put my new dart here at my two inch mark. 
and I, so it's about two inches from the bodice and then what I did was just drew my line all the way out to my original 12 dart which is out here all right this is where my 12 inch dart was supposed to end so what I did was I'm sorry my 12 size 12 dart was supposed to end so what I did was I uh, brought my my point on my dart back to two and a half inches and then just measure it out to my original point and drew a line. Alright, so that's what you want to do if you would like to make your your dart um, less pointy at the back. That's what I like. Um, that's what I found works for me. Um, if you have any other tips, I'd love to hear from them below. Alright, if you don't have to make any adjustments or if you're okay with the way that yours fit, then don't do this step. Um, but if you don't want that pointy look, then you may want, especially if you have fuller breast or if you have a larger breast um, cup size, then you definitely want to um, take out some of the pointiness in there and add more fullness to that dart. Alright, so once you get that um, dart in and you get it drawn out the way you want to, what you want to do is take your number three and move it to the, or your pattern piece and let's move that to the side. Alright guys, so once you finish moving all your markings over to your fabric and drawing out your darts, what we want to do is go ahead and put our darts in. Alright, and if you're not familiar with that, I'll show you how to do that. You're basically just lining up both of these lines and pinning in your darts before you, um, you go ahead and iron them. Alright, so I am going to take one piece and sit it to the side here. Alright, so what you're going to do is just line up the top portion of your dart first and make sure that those lines line up and then I normally pin that and get that kind of pinned down and stationary. Then I go to the bottom and line up my dart lines on the bottom. All right, and once I get those, those lines mashed up, then I'm just going to go ahead and pin that dart down. All right, and once I get those darts pinned down, then I'm just going to go all the way down and make sure that I pin my, my darts going down. I'll come back and show you what that looks like. All right, guys, so I have my darts in both of my pieces, and of course what you're going to do is go ahead and stitch those darts out. Now what you want to do is always run your dart past the uh, end point so that you can tie it off at the end so you don't have those pointy ends. All right, let's go ahead and take care of that, and we'll be back. Right, guys, so I have my dart ironed in. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I have my dart stitched in. What I went ahead and did was iron my dart going down. Now, and on the pattern, it doesn't tell you to do this on the B, uh, view B but it does tell you on view C and D. I'm not sure why but I am going to go ahead and trim down my um, my uh, dart. Now the reason I'm going to do that too is because I do my fabric is uh, kind of sheer and see-through so I do not want that dart showing. Alright and that's just going to be tacky. So I'm going to cut that dart, trim that dart down. Alright it's about one fourth of an inch. And that already looks a lot better than that big old dart sticking out there. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on the second piece. Alright, so I have both of my darts stitched in on my two front pieces. Um, and I have trimmed them down so that I don't have, you know, that much showing through on the other side. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to put these two pieces, front pieces to All the right, side. Alright guys, so the next thing that we're going to do is work with our pieces that need to be interfacing, interfaced. Alright, so the pieces that you need to interface again are piece 8, piece 12, piece 15 and piece 9 all right and so what you want to do now in my case I have iron in fabric and so I'm going to go ahead and iron all of my pieces in but I'm going to trim my edges and the reason why I'm going to trim my edges is so that when you turn your corners out you don't have to worry about them being bulky from the interfacing so with you if you got sewing and interfacing you want to go ahead and baste all of your pieces to your interfacing like it tells you to in the instructions I'm going to go ahead and iron mine down but make sure on each piece you omit your corner so just make more of like a triangle on each corner and cut that off and then iron on the rest of your fabric all right so what you're going to do once you get all those corners uh, down is uh, go ahead and base yours down if you're using sew-in stitch and go ahead 
ahead and iron yours down if you are using iron on stitch but be sure to omit those corners we'll be back all right ladies so i have ironed down all of my pieces and i hope you have basted all your pieces if you used a um no sew interfacing all right and so what i have done like i asked you to do was make sure that i cut off all of my corners and you can kind of see there all right that i did all of my corners and i did that on every piece so that when i turn my corners inside out i don't have to worry about fussing with interfacing all right so what we're going to do is move all of those pieces to the side for now all right and the next piece that we're going to grab will be our back piece all right your back piece is going to be your piece number seven if you notice you have your darts that you need to stitch in that you're going to work that the same way that you did your front piece except for of course your darts are going a different way all right so i'm going to go ahead and start at the top and i'm going to fold my piece in and start pinning and what i'll do is show you what mine looks like when i finish and let's see make sure yours looks okay Alright, hunties, I got mine pinned up. I hope you have yours pinned up. And we're going to do the same thing. Run that stitch all the way down, um, um, following your lines on your darts. Stitch all the way out um, from your darts so that you can go ahead and tie those down and you won't get any pokles on the front. Alright, once I get mine stitched down, I will show you what mine looks like and we'll yeah, go. So I have stitched in my back darts and um, I went ahead after I stitched them in and did the same thing that we did to our um, front darts but I ironed mine to the center so both of your darts should be ironed facing uh, down to the center and then the next thing that you're going to do is go ahead and make you an E stitch going in between your triangle and your first notch all right and what that E stitch is for is basically to ease in your sleeve or ease in um, pull if we need to adjust uh, to ease in the shoulder part of your seams and we'll get to that in a minute but for right now go ahead and I press down your um your darts and go ahead and put in your E stitch and that's just a long stitch going from your triangle to your notch and you just want to um, stitch that on the longest stitches you can so that you can pull that and adjust it as you need to all so right hopefully you got that E stitch in on your shoulder because now it's time to put it to work all right so what you're gonna do is you already have your back piece laying um, wrong side down and now you want to go ahead and take your front piece and you want to lay it um, right sides together and go ahead and line everything up now here's where your E stitching comes in handy because if your shoulder um, doesn't fit for some reason then you can ease that stitch out if you got a little bit too much on the um, the back side then you can just pull your E stitch that you did and fix it to how it is actually it looks like I won't have to take any ease out of mine um, which is odd but what we're gonna do is go ahead and pin this up go ahead and pin both of your shoulder seams up alright and then once you get that pinned up go ahead and pin down your side seams too alright and we'll go ahead and kill both those birds with one those birds with one stone and I'll be back alright ladies so I have everything pinned up I have all of my sides pinned up and I have my shoulders eased in and pinned up. Alright, and so what you're going to do is go ahead and stitch and surge or surge or stitch. Um, I This is when I'll go ahead and surge all my ends before I connect them to my other pieces. Just because this is a white blouse. Well, this is what you want to do always. But this is a white blouse and you want to make sure that everything looks seamless. Alright, so go ahead and take care of that and we'll meet back here. Alright guys, so we have finished our side seams. And we have finished our shoulder seams and I have gone ahead and pressed um, all of my seams down and from the inside I used my serger to finish all of my seams so that they're nice and clean. I'll show you my seams on this side. Alright, so I finished all of my seams. Now the next thing that we're going to do is put on our pockets, alright? So let's move for right now our... Um, what we finished so far to the side and let's get our pocket piece number 11 alright so this is our pocket piece number 11 and if you notice I've drawn the fold line on um, what where we need to fold it at so the first thing that you're gonna do is take one of your pieces and you're gonna go ahead and finish that top edge alright and you can finish that either with an overlock machine or, or a serger or a um, a pair of pinking shears but go ahead and finish that top edge before we fold it then after you finish that top edge you're going to determine which side is your outside and fold it on the fold line to the outside 
like this all right and then once you get that folded we're gonna run a stitch from where your notch is going all the way down and that's on the 5 8 inch all right but you're gonna baste it and run uh, I'm sorry you're gonna stitch it and run a stitch going all the way down to the end of or to the top of the pocket so you'll finish right on the top of the pocket so from the notch hopefully y'all can see that from the notch all the way down to the to the end and when I come back I'll show you what that looks like all right so once you get those cut like I have mine cut then you're just going to take it and fold your pocket to the outside all right and then you're going to poke out all of your ends just to make sure you got all your ends poked out all right and then you're going to turn it to the inside and fold in all of your other seam allowances so going down you're going to fold in 5 8 of an inch at the bottom you're going to bring it around and fold in 5 8 of an inch all right and then also do it on the side once you get all that done or as you're pushing it in go ahead and press it so that you have all of your seam allowances on your pocket laying down nice and flat um, when you get yours done, come back and show me and we'll see what it looks like before we put it all on. Alright guys, so it's time to put our pocket on. So as you see, I have ironed in all of my uh, seams in my corners so that I have a nice square pocket. And now what we're going to do is put it on to the front of our shirt. Now like I said, I'm only doing one side, so I'll only do one side this way. However, if you want to do both, you are more than welcome. You just want to find where you made your notches at on your shirt and I have a small circle in a large circle and you're going to just match your pocket up to that and pin. Alright so I have lined I have lined everything up with the notches on the side and what you're going to do is just take your do an edge stitch going all the way around uh, the, down the side all the way down the bottom and then the same thing going up to the other side alright and make sure you take your time and get it as close to the edge as you can and make sure you stay even going all the way around do not stitch in the top portion because if you do then you won't have a pocket alright go ahead and stitch that down and we'll be back alright guys so we have finished our pocket I have not ironed it yet to get rid of all of my markings um, because we have a few more things that we have to do before we take it to the ironing board so, all right, if we finish, if you finish your pocket, what we're going to do is move down to our hem. All right, so what we're going to do first to finish our hem off is we're going to stitch a long basting stitch along the rim of our hem on one fourth of an inch on your sewing machine. All right, so you're going to take your, you're going to take your shirt to the sewing machine, and sew it on a one fourth inch. I'm going all the way around. I'm not going to do any folding or anything like that. All we're doing right now is just putting a stitch line on the one fourth of an inch um, from your hem, from the raw edge of your hem. And we'll be back. And let me see what yours looks all like. All right. So I have stitched in my one fourth stitch from the bottom. And as you see how it's bunching a little, that is what that stitch is to be used for. All right. So what you're going to do now is go all the way around your hem. And we're going to finish that hem by folding it in on the line that you just stitched, which is one fourth. All right, and then you're going to fold it up another 5 8 All right, so when you finish on your sewing machine, it should look similar to this. All right, and then what you're going to do is take that and stitch right along the seam line or right along that one fourth line that you folded in just to get that to lay down. Now, as you're going, what I would suggest doing this is pinning it first. All right, and as you pin it, then ease in the, uh, the fullness of your shirt. If you have any puckles or anything, ease in that fullness by taking these threads that you have at the end and pulling them in to ease in the fullness alright so I'm gonna go ahead and pin mine down so you can see how everything looks and then I'll come back right before we hem it down on that sewing machine and show you how that looks also alright ladies what you got mine is finished as far as pinning I have all of my pins in and I definitely had to in a few places use my ease stitching to pull it in and bring that fullness in but now what you're going to go ahead and do is run a stitch a regular stitch at the edge of your seam or your fold on the inside alright not on the outside but go ahead and do it on the inside and follow that all the way around and we'll be back alright guys so we are working really good on our white blouse and I have just finished doing the hem on mine and I hope you have too and if you noticed I went ahead and just pressed it on out just so I can make sure that everything laid flat and that everything was okay alright so we are done with our hem 
and it is time for us to start on our front band where our buttonholes will go. So we're going to put that to the side and we're going to get our piece eight. All right, you're going to have two of those pieces. Now what I, what I want you to do with these pieces before we get started is if, if you notice on my piece, I found the unnotched side, all right, and the, this is the notched side. So you want to find the unnotched side, all right, and you want to go ahead and stitch a 5 8 seam going all the way down um, that side, all right. So I went ahead and did that on both sides. What that's going to do is going to give you a guide when you get ready to fold it under and press it. You know that you can just go by instead of having to do guesswork and possibly be off. All right, so go ahead and stitch that in, and then you can iron it in if you don't need to stitch it in, and you want to just eyeball it. You know, go ahead and press that side under. And once we get that side pressed under on both of these, then we'll be back. All right, guys, I have pressed back my unnotched um, side of my for my front band that we're going to be using. And what we're going to do is put that band to the side, and I want to show you your next step that you're actually going to be doing. All right, I have already pinned my front band, or one of my front bands, to my shirt sleeve, or to my shirt front. All right, and if you notice, I used the side that I did not iron back. This is the side that I ironed back 5 eighths of an inch. And I took the notch side and I lined up my notch um, as I was going down to make sure. And I just lined it up and pinned it up going all the way down, all right? And you're going to have some left over on the bottom. It's about 5 eighths of an inch that you're going to have left over. Um, so go ahead and pin that down to on um, both sides to your front side, your front right side, and your front back side. And then right before we stitch, let's come back and make sure we got everything pinned down right. Alright, so guys, I got my um, bands pinned down. Everything is pinned down on both sides. Alright, so you guessed it. What we're going to do next is go ahead and stitch in 5 8 inch of a stitch. Uh, stitch blah. 5 8 inch of a stitch going all the way down. And then we'll come back and do this next step. Alright, here we are on the band. So what I have done so far is I have went ahead and uh, pressed back all of my seams. I have attached uh, both of my front pieces to the front part of my bodice, matching up all not notches. Alright, and then I pressed, once I stitched everything together, I pressed it going all the way back. Alright, and so that's where we're at now. And I've also on one side went ahead and trimmed off the excess of the seam allowance, so I'm going to do that on this side too. And you just want to trim it down. Alright, so once that's done, we'll put that to the side. Alright, now our next step, and um, do make sure that you still have your notches. It's going to show you where to put your buttons at, because we'll be using those in a few minutes. Alright, so what we're going to do now is go ahead and bind the bottom portion of our, um, our band to make sure that it lines up with this part of our band. So what you want to do is go ahead and fold uh, your band on itself, basically with the right sides together, like this. Alright, and then once you get those folded, make sure you have the, your edges matching up. It's also going to be the fold line that you made. It's going to be the middle part. Alright, but we're going to go ahead and pin that. Alright, and then once we get that pin, you're going to run a stitch going around that part. And then uh, going all the way down that part. And then I will go ahead and back stitch at the end. Then you want to turn it on the inside, or trim all first and then turn on the inside. And then you'll notice that everything will line up with your ordinary stitch that you have here. All right, we'll be back to see if yours looks right, the guys. same. So here we are, and here's what your finished bottom edge should look like. And if you notice, it goes even with the, um, the, the part of that you had already hemmed. All right, and I'm gonna just show you the steps on the other side so you can see how I got to this. All right, on my other side, I have already taken it and I have folded it in on itself or basically folded it with right sides together as you can see alright and then what I did is I have a little bit left over so I'm gonna take my scissors and just trim off that extra edge alright be careful not to cut your thread but cut as close to that as you can so you don't have that much uh, seam left alright and then you're just gonna take it and turn it inside out push out your ends much as you can. Right, and I usually like to take the ball of a needle. 
like this and then just be careful and careful and just stick it up in there don't poke yourself you know that just kind of helps poke it out all right and then once I get that turned out then I can flip it over on this side cut off all of my threads All right, and that is how my flipped in edge should look. All right, and I have one matching on both right. sides. So what we have done is we went ahead, once we finish putting our, um, finishing off our ends, what we're gonna do is fold everything going back. All right, and you've already pretty much started your fold. And that's the reason for tucking over your end and make, so that's all tucked in. All right, and you're just going to make sure that it matches on the inside with the seam um, that you already created when you attach it to your bodice. All right, and what you're going to do is go ahead and fold that back going all the way down. All right, and then once you get that folded back, you're going to press it so you have a nice clean edge. All right, and then we're going to come back and I'm going to show you how to do that slip stitch so that you can close everything All down. Right, nice. Here is where I'm at and I have for the most part went ahead and slip stitched um, everything down except for the last part and I just wanted to show you exactly what a slip stitch is. So we're going to let this get in focus and I left just a tad bit here for me to finish slip stitching. Basically what you do with a slip stitch is Take one little small bit of the bottom portion that you're working on and then come up and take a small portion of the top that you're working on and then you just slide them together and close it off. Alright, and then when you pull it tight, it closes it off so that you don't have any edges and you do that going all the way down and then that way you get this nice clean finish with very minimal thread. Get that, um, that everything stay stitched and get our button holes ready for us to use. We're not going to go ahead and do our button holes yet. Instead what we're going to go ahead and do is prepare our collar. Alright so what you want to do is get your collar and you want to do a stay stitch and basically that's one fourth from the edge of your neck collar going all the way around that neck collar and what that does is just keep it from you know bending out of place while you're working with it or anything like that so go ahead and do a stay stitch it's just a long stitch uh, basing stitch going all the way around one fourth from the edge and let's come back um, once you finish doing that stay stitch then I want you to grab your piece nine and here's what your piece nine should look like all right, and what we're going to do is on the, the notched edge, which is the edge that's not curved, all right, on the straight tipped edge, we're just going to take it and fold it back 5 eighths of an inch, and we're going to press it. You can do the same technique if you want by running a basting stitch 5 eighths of an inch so you have a guide, but it, no matter how you do it, go ahead and base that back. I'm, go, I'm sorry, go ahead and press that back 5 eighths five eighth of an inch, and let's start getting that collar ready. All right, don't forget to stay stitch your collar first. Right, so once you finish dealing with your, uh, once you finish doing your stay stitch around your collar, <clears throat> you're going to put that to the side, and we're going to grab your piece 12. All right, so your piece 12, you should have a piece that's interfaced and a regular piece, a piece that's not. All right, and both pieces should have your two circles at the top. That's very important because we will be using those in a just a little bit. But for now, what we're going to do is stitch these together. Make sure that you have your right sides together like I do here. All right, and then we're going to stitch. Now you want to find the notch side of your collar because this is a piece of the collar. All right, and that's your notch part right there. We are not going to stitch that part. We're going to leave that portion open. What we're going to stitch is going from point all the way down, all the way across, and back up to your other point. Make sure to leave this portion free. Once you finish, you're going to trim all of your seam allowances down and then you're going to flip it on the inside and press it. All right, when we come back, we'll compare the two, see what that looks like, and then we'll put the rest yeah, of this so together. So what I have now is my piece 12, which is up under here, and my two piece nines. And what I've done, what I went ahead and done is like I asked you to do is um, earlier, is just go ahead and press 5 8 of an inch on the interfaced portion of piece 9. All right, and then um, you also have the uninterfaced portion of piece nine that has not been turned under. Now, what I've done is taken my piece 12 
and pretty much sandwiched it between both pieces. All right, I have my interface piece on, on one side and my uninterface piece on the other side, and I have it in between my two circles that I have here. All right, so what you're gonna do now is run a 5 8 inch stitch going all the way around, enclosing both. All right, but you're going to keep your neck edge feet free because we're gonna fold that down in just a second here. All right, but for right now, go ahead and do a regular stitch 5 8 inch in all the way around encasing uh, your collar. All right, guys, I have everything stitched down, and you can see that stitch going all the way around. All right, and like I mentioned, we're going to go ahead and flip it on the, well, before we flip it on the outside, let's not forget, like I almost did, to trim away all of your seam allowances. Just so there's no bulkiness at all when we fold it under, fold the right side out. Alright, and once I cut away all of my seams, then I'm just going to go ahead and turn it right side out. Alright, and once you get that right side out, this is similar to how yours should look. You want to go ahead and press that down so it doesn't flip up. So when you get it ready to sew it onto your neck edge of your collar, you are good to go with it being pushed down. So go ahead and uh, flat, um, flat iron. <laughs> go ahead and press this down, and so we can get it ready for your neck edge. And come back and see me so we can attach. Right, guys, I got everything lined up. I have my triangles matched up uh, with my seams. I also have all of my notches matched up, and I definitely had to ease it in a little bit um, towards the middle portion of it, but I got everything in there. What you wanna do now is go ahead and stitch a 5 8 inch going all the way down. Take out your pins as you go, and then we're going to flip it up, press it, and slip stitch our portion over our uh, seam allowance when we finish so that it looks like that minus the pins. All right, so we're gonna do all of that Go ahead and stitch, go ahead and press back and trim your seam allowances, and then fold over and do your good old slip stitch. We'll come back when we're done with that. All right, so I have my collar officially laid and slayed. All right, and when I finish everything, these wrinkles are driving me crazy, so I'm gonna press everything down super, 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 super good. All right, and get all of my creases out of everything. So. Now, we just want to attach our arms and then we'll put our buttons on and then we'll be done. All right, so let's put our shirt piece to the side and let's grab our piece 13 and our piece 14. Your piece 13 should look like this. All right, and your piece 14 is a smaller piece is gonna be attached to your piece 15 and it looks similar to this. All right, so both pieces have a, um, a section down at the bottom that you have to pleat. Now on this one, I've went ahead and done it. I wanted to go over it with you on this one. Um, by now you guys should be good with those pleats, but just in case, I just wanted to show you. It always tells you which way your pleat is going to go um, based off of the arrow and usually based off of the small and big circle. All right, so we're gonna just pleat it from one to the other, folding it like this and then we're just going to pin it like the other one all right once we get it pinned then you're just going to baste it going all the way down uh, in a basting stitch and across so we can baste those in place all right guys so my camera went dead so i finished a few steps while i was waiting on the battery to charge um and i just want to update you on what i did so i went ahead and sewed um, my two pieces together all right but when i got to the bottom um there i had left a little mark on the bottom to let me know where it needs to split all right and all we did from there is just sewed all the way down to the notch 
and then folded it back and did a top stitch across both pieces to open it up before we connect it. All right, so we did that on both pieces as well as make sure we ironed our pleats in. And once we connect everything, we'll take those out. So the next step for both pieces is to go ahead and sew the underarm stitch. All right, so what we're gonna do is fold these pieces on themselves, which means right sides together. All right, and matching all of our notches, we're going to pin. All right, and when we finish pinning all of these, we're gonna go ahead and sew a 5 8 inch seam going all the way down. All right, and then we're gonna press everything out. And when I come back, we'll get ready to connect this bad boy to your shirt. And we are almost done. I am so excited. This has been a task. So many pieces. I don't know about you, how you felt about it. But I'd love to hear below how everything went as when you were making it. Um, this was my first time sewing this pattern. So I did run into a little, a few speed bumps, but nothing I couldn't handle. Cannot wait to show you guys the finished product and see your finished product. All right, so I have one stitched up. I'm gonna go ahead and take this one and the other one once I finish pinning it down to the sewing machine and stitch a 5 8 inch seam going all the way down. See you in just a second. All right, guys, we got both of our sleeves down and stitched down and um, I've got mine surged and pressed. So now um, I've done that on both sides. There's one. And here's my other. All right, so we got our two sleeves that we're gonna take and kind of throw to the side over there. And now we're gonna work on our cuffs. All right, these are our two cuffs and the pieces for these cuffs are piece, piece 15s. And what we're gonna do is find the unnotched side so here's the notch side and that's just indicated by our notch. This is the unnotched side. What we're gonna do is press that under 5 8 of an inch, all right? You can do the trick if you want to um, as far as stitching in 5 8 and then pressing it so you have a guide or you can just go ahead and, and eyeball it and press it down 5 8 of an inch, inch. But make sure you are on the unnotched side, all right, and you stitch on the, uh, the side that's not notched, here's my notch for this one. So which means I'm going to fold this under and press it going um, towards the back. Press it to the inside 5 8 of an inch. Once you do that, come back and we'll put this all together. All right, so here we are with our uh, pressed edge on our uh, piece 12, I'm sorry, on our piece 15, and this is going to be the cuff of our shirt. All right, and so what you're gonna do now is take it, and you notice I have marked my fold line on my piece. I'm just gonna fold it on that fold line with right sides together. All right, and I'm gonna pin it. All right, I'm gonna come to the other side and fold it on the fold line again. All right, and I'm gonna pin that side. All right, and then I'm just gonna do a few more pins on both sides. All right, I got one of these pinned and I've already done my other one. Now what you're gonna do is just take these and run a 5 8 inch stitch going all the way on each side to bind those sides, all right? And then you're gonna trim your seam allowances like we've been doing on both sides and then flip that bad boy over, all right? And then we're going to press it out so that we have a nice clean cuff, all right? So the first thing you're gonna do is stitch a 5 8 inch stitch going on both sides trim both sides then we're going to flip it right side out and press right along the fold line all right let's take care of that and meet back here 
All right, guys, so we are pretty much almost done. All right, so what I have done thus far is did what I asked you to do, uh, which was go ahead and press everything in, turn everything inside out. I've attached my cuffs to the bottom part of uh, my sleeve, and I have also put in my button holes that you can see right here, and all that will go away when I apply heat to it. However, what we have left to do now is go ahead and attach these to our bodice piece. All right, and then just stitch on our buttonholes and we will be done. All right, so of course what you're going to do is turn your bodice right side out. I'm sorry, turn your bodice wrong side out. All right. And then you're going to leave your shirt right side out. And then what you're going to do is with right sides together, just match up all of your notches, all of your seams, and everything. All right. So I'm just going to start with my um, underarm notch, which is the, or my underarm seam, which is there, and match that one with there, and pin it. So you're going to line up all of your seams, all of your notches. And at the top of your sleeve, you also have markings that you put in. This is going to be lined up with the top, uh, your top seam. So here's the top seam on the shoulder, or the shoulder seam. You're just going to line that up. And pin it. Alright, and then you're just going to line up the rest of your notches. And I have my two notches there. Pin that. All right, and then you're just going to go through slowly and ease in the rest of your sleeve just by going around, lining everything up, and pinning as you go around. Go ahead and put both of those sleeves in. Make sure you line up all of your notches like I have my notch. I would suggest you start with your top notch. All right, your top indication and line it up with your shoulder seam and then go and get your under your arm seam and line those up together. Pin those and then go around and match everything up. Once we come back with both of those sleeves set in, then we will go ahead and stitch. All right, I'll see you in a second. All right, guys, this is how my sleeve looked after I finished easing it in. You can see that on both. Looks like a pin cushion, huh? <laughs> But it literally took that many pins to ease in my sleeve cap. Alright, so I made sure I lined up all of my notches. I made sure I lined up all of my seams. And then I just kind of eased the rest of it in. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is sew everything down. And come back and see what you look like. We are just about done. Alright guys, I have just about completed mine. Alright, I have went and I have put, um, I have attached everything. I have attached my sleeves. You can see that they are attached. It took a minute to ease them in. I will be completely honest with you. It was not easy, like it said on the um, the packet, but I got them in. Alright, and I went ahead and put my buttonholes in. Alright, and you can see that there. I have not stitched on my buttons, but that is all I have left to do. Um, I also went ahead and put my buttonholes on my shirt. Alright, and there they are. And I have not put my buttons on yet, but that is the only thing that I have left to do on my shirt. Alright, you need to go ahead and use your buttonhole um, maker to make your buttons on your shirt. And then, I mean, to make your button holes in your shirt and then add your buttons. And then you are done with your white blouse. Give yourself a hand. All right. This one was a little bit of a doozy, I will say, just because I have not made a whole lot of tailored outfits. Um, I do have to go back in on mine and clean up all of my uh, notches and everything, which will pretty much be gone once I put my buttons in and open up my holes for everything else. All right. So take your time. Finish everything else that you have left to do. So those buttons on nice and tight so that they don't get... um so that they stay on, they don't come off. Make sure that you do your buttonhole um, at the very top. 
um, because you do have a button that goes at the top to kind of close that in. Alright guys, we are done. We have completed our white blouse. I cannot wait to show you guys the pictures and to upload the tutorial. And this is my week, so on Monday you will get to see my um, version or how I style my white dress. I think I'm going to do a casual look as well as a dressy look just so you guys can see the variations in using your white blouse. Um, don't forget this is part of the Build Your Wardrobe series. We're sponsored by Fiskars as well as Fabric Mart. If you make your version of the white blouse, don't forget to tag Miss Crafty Chick as well as hashtag build your wardrobe on Instagram so we can share all those wonderful pictures that we've been getting. Until next time.